This meeting is being recorded. Oh, assalamualaikum everyone. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to another Heart of Hodge series. This is Girls Gone Hodge. I'm Hodja Farida. You will see, I can't tell what squares are where, but um, I'll have our, my Hodges introduce themselves. Well, I'll go since I'm next to you, Hodja Saida. Hodja Hanifa. And I'm Hodja Sutana. We're gonna go ahead and, and open up um, with the dua and then we'll get started, inshallah. Um, A'udhu billahi mina shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmani rahim. Maliki yawm adin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina sirotu musakin. Sirotu alladina anamta alayhim. Khayrul maqtubi alayhim waladdolim. Ameen. Amin. So, welcome, everyone. This is our February Heart of Hodge series. We are pleased that Sister Intasar Bashir, who is a Hodja, joined us for this series. And we wanted to just give her some time to introduce herself, and then we'll get more into the, the core of the questions. But we're thrilled she's here. Again, if you are new to Girls Go Hodge, Heart of Hodge series, this is an idea that originated just between the four of us wanting to just keep the conversations about Hodge going. The mission of Girls Gone Hajj, of course, is to inspire Muslim women to make Hajj ASAP. So with that, Sister Haja into Sar Bashir, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm into Sar Bashir, a native of Columbus, Ohio, um, daughter of Vicky Bashir. Shout out to my mama and my auntie, Adria Shahi, on here. Um, I am a wife, a mother, a four, a sister, um, and a friend, and a haja, alhamdulillah. Um, so not much more about me, I don't know. So we were curious about how you like decided to make haj. Is that something you dreamed of all the time? How did that, how did the haj spirit jump into your, into your heart? So it's kind of, it's, it's an interesting story of sorts. Um, so we, um, my husband and I performed Hajj Alhamdulillah in 2013. Um, I think we had been married roughly about like seven years or so at that point. And he was actually facing um, layoffs at his job. And he was like, well, if I'm going to get laid off, while we have the money, we should go to Hodge. And I was like, um, brother, ain't that the like the other way? Like we should not be trying to go to Hodge because we need to save our money. But after we like, we talked it over um, and it just cut, like he made it make sense to me. Like it's, it's incumbent on us kind of to perform the Hodge if we have the means to make the Hodge. And at that point in time, we had the means, alhamdulillah. And so I, the other um, caveat was that I had, we had two children at the time um, and my youngest was, she was about 16 months when we performed the Hodge. So she was even younger than that when we had decided to go to Hodge. And so that was another like deterrent for me. I'm like, well, should I leave her? Like, I don't know. Cause I was still breastfeeding her at the time. Um, but like I said, he's a, he's a pretty convincing fellow. And along with him convincing me that it was kind of incumbent on us to go at that time, um, like my my train of thought just fell in line with that. And that it, you know, if a lot truly wanted us to be there that year, then it was okay to leave her, even though we were breastfeeding. And so it was just like it kind of all happened smoothly after we had decided to make that. Um, make our intentions to perform the Hajj that year. Um, she weaned really easily. 
um it lined up where I think in all we were supposed to be gone for about three weeks so like we made the arrangements for our kids the first week to stay with my mom the second week to stay with my sister and then third week to go um to Michigan to stay with my in-law so I don't know I just kind of all worked out and so we were blessed to be able to make the pilgrimage I'm really glad that is a um a prevalent theme and one of concern for you know mothers especially of young children especially breastfeeding so we are so glad that you articulated that once you know your husband had the convincing words um you know things literally just happened and that is one of the themes that we constantly tell people and women that as soon as you make your intentions a lot um aligns things for you so beautifully so thank you for articulating that um so we just wanted to get into how um transformative was hodge for you um it was my first experience in a muslim country um, so it was one of my first experiences with predominantly non-African American Muslims. So it was like, it was just like very eye-opening to me. Alhamdulillah, like um, I went to Muhammad Schools of Atlanta. So, but then I also went to a PWI for college. So I... I like to say that I had the like HBCU experience in high school and then in college, I kind of, you know, had that whole PWI. And so, I mean, I was exposed to non-African American Muslims at college, but it was, you know, everybody's doing their own thing, vastly different from, you know, you making your attentions and going over to make the pilgrimage. So um, it was transformative in the way that it helped me see myself in the like greater Islamic community. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really know how to fully articulate it, even though it's been 10 years. It's just like, it helped me just find my place in how, you know, how we all move together. And like, at the end of the day, we are all the same and we all worship the same. We all pray in the same direction. So it was just, it was interesting in that aspect to let me see myself amongst the masses, you know, so. That's wonderful. So what <clears throat> surprised you about Hajj or even the whole Hajj journey process? Is there anything that sticks out in your mind? <laughs> um, like they have it down to a science, like, getting people where like it's it seems like it's mass confusion in which I mean at the end of the day it kind of is but it like it works for them because I just like one of the things that always sticks out in my mind it would be like you would be at the harem right and it's like thousands of people there but at any given moment whenever they have it scheduled like they would make that like rotation around and like clean the floors and everybody would just kind of like move out the way and I'll be like that would never happen in America. Like people would just not move out of the way, but it's like, it makes sense. It's all these people here. They do need to keep it clean and they would just like dump buckets of water down and then they would just, just sit there and look like, wow. And then everybody just moved out the way and then you just go on about your business. So it was just like, it was really interesting. Like they have it down to a science. They know what they're doing. Like, I don't know if any other country would be able to, like, be able to have things going like clockwork with that many people just ascending upon their, you know, that relatively small space. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, I don't know, geographics, but like, it's not like a huge, huge place, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I know at one point in time, we were staying in Azazia, which was not that far away, because I know at one point we walked from like Azazia back to the harem. So if I could walk it, then it's definitely not like miles and miles and miles, you know? So it was just interesting to see 
just how I'm, I'm very much like a people watcher. So it's just interesting to see like how people in a whole nother different country like operate and still got things done with that many people just around, so. Alhamdulillah, we love that reflection because it's just, that floor is clean. Right, like you just be like, oh, okay. This, right. and you got used to it, so. I know, it's like, you can't keep your kitchen floor clean, that clean, and they do it with millions of people rotating through that space over time. So we're just curious about where Brownages enters post Hodge, talk us through the inception of Brownages. You know, we always talk about these bold and uh, big Arafat prayers, but curious, was it an Arafat prayer? If you feel like sharing that or just walk us through the inception of Brownages as a company. I would say that Brownages in and of itself wasn't like an Arafat prayer, but it's always been a hope and a dream and a prayer of like Rashid and I to start a business. It just so happened that the one that this idea stuck and we like kept with it and alhamdulillah trying to like grow it. So I wouldn't say it was like by name, it was something that we prayed for, um, but it was something that we prayed for, you know what I mean? Um, because the time frame between when we started Roundages and when we made Hodge, like I said, we made Hodge in 2013 and we started Roundages in 2018. So that's what, like five years difference or something like that. Um, yeah, so it, it wasn't a specific prayer or anything like that, but it was always a prayer of ours to be able to start a business. Um, I come from a long line of entrepreneurs, and so it was just always something that I desired. I don't know if I rubbed off on him. Um, I'll take that credit, but um, that was something that we always talked about, um, starting a business together. So what if any, um, exciting things lie ahead for Brownages? Um, we're really like, we're really at a point where we're just trying to expand um, and not necessarily our product line. We have like tons of product, but we want to expand our reach and get into like, possibly retail we definitely want to um expand our reach onto the continent like that's a major dream of ours like we've had a couple like starts and stops of people there reaching out and said they want to bring our product there but there's a lot of logistics that go into that and that um like this business like is not what Rashid and I do in our like nine to five life so we're learning as we go along, um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure it out. So if anybody out there has any leads or knows how to do this, like reach out to a sister because I am all about collaboration and working together. Um, so yeah, that that's our, our dream right now is just to continue to expand. Like we have gotten, alhamdulillah, like a lot of exposure over these, um, over the time that we started the business but we want to just like solidify some things and, you know, ensure that our company is here to stay, inshallah. So, you know, I, I'm a Brownages enthusiast. Um, I'm always like, what? Why, why would you buy an ordinary band aid? Like, I don't know. It makes no sense. Why? why? So, I love how I love the family emphasis that Brownages have. Talk about the career inspired themes on the kids kids line. I, I'd love to hear that story. Okay. Yeah. So um as you all probably are aware, kids can go through some bandages and a bandage can like shut down the whining, the crying, like a given any given moment. If even if it's not a visible sore like you can stick a bandage on a kid and like 
dried up like they're good right so we um we were at a point where we had three children at that time they were going through bandages they were starting to want to lean towards the ones that had the images on them and it was generally like the princesses for my daughter or the superheroes for my son and like none of the characters on any of those bandages that you could get at the store looked like them let alone um they couldn't really grow up to be a, a superhero or a princess like that's not in our um our our lineage i would say um so we decided to launch our children's line with um images of children who actually um they're created in the likeness of our kids um in professions that they can actually grow and aspire to so um like my oldest naila um she's depicted as a chef um, my daughter, Yasmin, she is depicted as a veterinarian. My son, Tahir, he's depicted as um, an astronaut. My good friend, Nafisa's son, is the other little boy on his tin, um, Zane, and he is a pilot. So we wanted like actual professions that kids could like attain. Um, and it's, it's, it's something like, like I, it's really been fun to watch like kids see the images and to get the reviews back from their parents and like the actual like their actual kids like identify with a particular character and like like parents have sent us pictures of their kids and like my son is like he thinks Zane is him like you know what I mean and he's like oh mommy look like I'm a pilot on this like it's just so cool to see that like something as small as a bandage with an image on it can resonate with like children and it's like it takes just that one glimpse of them seeing themselves in something and then that's all they need to like be wired to think oh I can be this like you know I can grow up and do this so that's that's something that we've really enjoyed um giving to like just children what uh, so it seems like your, your children were the inspiration um, behind brand, brand, uh, brown ditches. Um, so what other type of research did you have to do um, to you know, start the company? Um, so like I said, this is not our forte. We are really a fly by the seat of our pants kind of couple. So we just was like, okay, let's do that. And then I will give him the credit. He came up with a name. Like he's, he's, a, he's an author, so he has a way with words. So he came up with a name and I was like, oh, okay, that was pretty good. And then Alhamdulillah, it's just like within our community. I'm not sure if you guys know Brother uh, Salim, um, Brother Malik Salim. He is one of the co-founders of True Laundry Detergent. He has been a godsend. He like, if he don't know somebody, he knows somebody that knows somebody. They'll put you in contact with who you need to know to get your product produced. So Alhamdulillah, um, it was um, really as simple as reaching out to him with our idea. And he was like, okay, give me a couple of days, you know, I'll find, I'll find a manufacturer for you. And then Alhamdulillah, after I would say finding the manufacturer was the hardest part was finding somebody to do the graphic design and artwork. Um, people just don't be want to get money. Like you be trying to pay them and they just be like, nah, let me ignore this email. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, Alhamdulillah, we um it was worth the wait. We found a husband and wife duo out of Pennsylvania. They're Muslim, alhamdulillah, Rashida and um, Zakir. They um, run 19 is the agency design firm and they do amazing work. Um, they're very responsive. Like all of those flaky people that we went through like before, mm -mm, none of that with them, you know what I mean? So alhamdulillah, and they're Muslim. So it's just, you know, a little extra um incentive to work with them but alhamdulillah it was it was a pleasure to work with them they did all of our package design and it was just a matter of sending that to our manufacturer and they brought it to life alhamdulillah uh, we you know we um so relate to the when you like deal with muslims trying to get your image and you know we when we did our logo, you know, we do use New Africa and she just got us. Like we didn't have to, you know, we want a Kaaba. She made the minarets and it was just, I think we have like two, you know, we sent one thing. She said, okay, she came back just like that, you know? So it's 
so important to collaborate with um, people that look like us, people with our faith, because some of the stuff is just explained, you know, right, you know, yeah. we know how like, you know, cheap the fibers are and no disrespect to them, but we've had an experience where, you know, we're like, who is, it's like a Bollywood, you know, mm -hmm. type of vibe. And we're like, go on our website, like get the vibe right. of our website. And he, the, the artist just kept coming back with, and I'm like, maybe this isn't the design for him. Yeah. <laughs> he was so cute. He's like, mashallah, you know, um, you guys are Muslim. I'm Muslim too. But he, it's just, it's so yeah. imperative that we throw the names out of people in our community that are artists and, um, you know, doing what we, the have the services that we need. Yeah, definitely, definitely. To shout out one more vendor, um, Brother Asher did our logo. Alhamdulillah, he's a African American Muslim. He's um, he has the Measured Tone Institute. Um, he does the yeah, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, his his company did our logo as well. So we try to do our best to keep it in family. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Wow, and um, so you know we are constantly trying to inspire you know Muslim women to make Hajj and we just wondered um what would you say to some a Muslima who is like sitting on the fence who's like eh, I don't know I don't have the money or I you know don't know if I can get the you know care child care for my children what what would you say to them I would say um, make your intentions um, and Allah will provide, like Allah will provide the way for you. If you're meant to be there, like you're going to be there. You don't know where the money is from. Like I know one of my roommates um, when I made Hodge was um, that too. And like, she didn't know she was going to be at Hodge until like the week before, like she was a little frazzled when she got there, but she didn't know she was like her, her children sent her. Like she had no idea. Like she, and Alhamdulillah, she was there. Um, she was an older sister, but she was just like, I, you know, like they sent me, I'm here, Alhamdulillah. Like she made the best of it. And like, um, she's actually in Cincinnati and every now and again, um, we hook up. So it's just really cool that like, you know, you make your intentions. If Allah wants you there that year, you will be there. Um, whether it's finances, whether it's child care, like Allah will provide a way if he wants you with him that year. Well, I'm glad that you said that because that's been our constant theme. Um, you know, just make your intentions and Allah will provide the rest. Um, I think it was me who told everybody that we were gonna make Hodge and they were like, yeah, okay. Um, and I didn't, it just, you know, the invitation came and I was like, this is what I'm doing. And I didn't have a plan. It was not prepared. It was none of those things. And even when I shared it with um, the twins, um, you know, we were all like, you know, okay. But, you know, Allah made a way for it to happen. And I just think that it's important to continue to tell people and to teach that. Just make your intentions. As long as they're sincere, you know, Allah will provide the rest. Subhanallah. I also wonder if, you know, with the example that you set in your your with your children, you know, you always wonder when they're gonna make it because they have the example of their parents making it. What about your parents? Did they make Hodge as well? Yes, alhamdulillah, my parents have made Hajj. Um, my dad has gone twice and my mom has gone once. Um, so alhamdulillah, I, I did have that example when um, like the time that my father went, I wanna say he went in like 92. And then when my parents went together, it was like 96, correct me if I'm wrong, mama. Um, and alhamdulillah, when they went together, they also like other family members went. So my grandmother went, alhamdulillah, and my aunt and my uncle, my father's um, sister, they went as well. So alhamdulillah, it was like a family affair. Oh yeah, and when me and Rashid went, his sister 
came, my sister-in-law, she came with us. So she was one of my roommates. So it was really cool experience to be able to perform Hajj with my sister-in-law. And it really like, alhamdulillah, she's always has been a, um, a shining example for me, but like that elevated it. Like it really, really elevated. I was like, okay, I can, I can emulate some of her behavior. Like seriously, like she is a trained nurse and the amount the amount of like I don't know she was just there for everybody like if anybody was feeling any kind of way like she appeared out of nowhere like she um it was an instance where like she would be on the bus when we were traveling and she's like passing out dates to people and stuff like that and I just be like okay you know what I'm about to do what my husband's doing and about to get these blessings because but alhamdulillah like she was just a shining example for me so it was a real blessing for me to be able to attend Hodge with her you know that is um we're encouraged like families to go because it does kind of your mind and you know Alhamdulillah, you were able to make it with your husband. So we had um, one of our friends, she went out of Philly. She went with her husband. And, you know, she had a different experience than us because she was able to move a little bit more freely, you know? Like she was camped out at Master of Harlem where we, you know, had to sometimes like navigate. And so um, it's, a, it's a great couple thing to do, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend. Right. <laughs> so are you, has anyone asked you to be a mentor since you are, are you know, you have this business and it's, it's successful? Um, has, has anyone reached out to you or are you looking to mentor um, people in business? Um, child, I don't know if I'm the one, but I, I'm, like I said, I'm an open book. I, if anybody needs anything from me, like I am more than happy and willing to pass along any knowledge that I have. Um, Loki, I'm looking for a mentor. Um, but yeah, if, if I can help, shoot me an email. Like I'm all for it. I'm all for helping my people like get whatever they want in this life. So so you mentioned that your husband was an author. What type of author? He's a children's book author. Alhamdulillah, he has three books um, right now published and two more coming out um, within the next like three months, inshallah. So we're really going to try to um, push those soon. Oh, we love that. And can you let us know the author, the name of the books or the author um, that? Yeah, um, they're actually available on our Brownages website. Um, his first book was Tara, Tara Turtle and Her Beautiful Shell, um, Amir Amadillo and the World with No Girls, and then Horace Hedgehog and the Special Project, I believe is the title. So um, it's, uh, and also the sister Rashida, who is part of the wife out of the, um, 19 is the agency that does our graphic design. She's the illustrator. I'm telling you guys, y'all need some kind of something, something like she the one. Um, so I'm delighted. She's, she's been a blessing to us and she does amazing work. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to open this up to if anyone has any questions. Um, I typed it. If you have a question, type it in the chat. If you have a comment um, if, or anything that you would like to share, please unmute yourself and she can share now. While we wait for people to um, warm up to the chat, um, tell us about Shark Tank. What was that like? Shark Tank was interesting. It was, it was, I, I never been on TV before. So it was just like an interesting experience. It was so much work that went into it. Like, um, I want to say it started in January. We filmed in June and it didn't air until April this year. So it was like a whole years time span or whatever um but it was a it was a good experience we really enjoyed it 
like at the end of the day we didn't like finish our deal with them like we didn't sign the because like on the show you you make a handshake deal and then you have to do like your due diligence to um see if both like us and the sharks want to move forward with the deal but a lot of them we didn't want to yeah so but it was a good experience like no no um no negative anything or surrounding or anything like that it was a good experience alhamdulillah did that shark tank experience um or just being on the show give your business like more buzz did it create um yes yes it did alhamdulillah it really did provide a exposure that we don't think we ever would have gotten like elsewhere like it gave us exposure in like like people from Pakistan email us people people from like Dubai email us and it's just like oh first of all I didn't even know they showed the show like in that many places but alhamdulillah like it, it was it really did give us a lot of exposure and how did the competition react to it um to Shark Tank or just our business in general your business in general what you can share everybody and their mama is doing what we do every bandage company has pretty much like expanded their line to include shades now so a lot knows this I'm doing well. was that happening before brownages or since brownages because i never paid attention to band-aids really because i don't have um so like to our knowledge there was only one active company that did similar to what we do um like if you go back in the crates like in like old jet magazines like somebody just tagged us like last week on a brown a brand that i had never heard of it was called like soul aid or something like that and i was like oh, I stuff back, back then so i'm lot like we never once want people to think that like we originated this idea but it has grown since we've come out to market. I was in Target the other day. I can't even look at them. You and me both. You and me I'm both. Like, I can't. I'm not like, like, what? Yeah, no. People be like, like, they always tell you, like, oh, you should be aware of your competition. And I am. But also, when I walk past that aisle, I'll be like, whatever. <laughs> I know, and I I think just the the story, the brand story is just is more compelling than you know some corporation right 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 yeah no idea of what what we should be buying so you know it's brownages for me I'm sorry <laughs> we appreciate you sis <laughs> um and I love how like your children on cue are like brownages look right here my seven year old son. <laughs> bro he be on it i'll be like you know what we got to put you on the payroll my boy because you really be on it like he'll call out some people like and one time my brother like came over and he had like a bandage on the face and Tyre was like excuse me uncle like is you need a bandage brother and i was like see yep he know what he's talking about you know i had to keep our brown to just can like First, it was like in, you know, where we keep the first aid stuff. And then somehow it ended up in my son's room. So it hit a bit like a speck, you know, but like, need a mommy, look, look. I'm like, looking. <laughs> I right, said, you right. just want a brown to join. That's it. <laughs> but it's just so beautiful to see him reflected in a product he's wearing. So yeah, that's blessings, know. blessings, blessings. <laughs> All right, and now tell us, you know, we're hip hop heads. So how did the Roots, the Black Thought rap come about? Like the Google collaboration, how did that come about? So like, I think every year Google does something similar. Um, a lot, bro, I don't know. Um, 
don't know. Um, they and so they reached out to us. And so like it's so random, like when stuff like that happened, I'm like, is this real? I don't know. I'm gonna respond just in case it is real. And so I responded. And when they they said him, I was like, stop playing. But I'm gonna respond. I'm gonna give you all the information that you ever can need from me because if it is real, we doing this. So alhamdulillah, um, it, it came into fruition. And then I do want to say, like, it was a sister. She reached out to us. Oh, man, I can't remember her name. I, di I, I didn't know the sister, but she reached out to us once. And she said that her husband, I want to say, is friends with um, Black Thought. And he put, like, a little bug in their ear, in his ear. And so I was like, look, sis, I appreciate you. I don't know you, but thank you. I have to lost your crown, like, all that good stuff. Like, it was really, like, it's like you just never know who knows about your business and you know what I mean so it's just like alhamdulillah like we're just out here doing our thing and alhamdulillah Allah continues to like bless us with different opportunities and I'm just extremely grateful alhamdulillah we have a question from um Aliyah Mahadi oh okay who asked would you recommend going to Hajj with children Oh, child, I don't know. It was one sister that when we went, she had, I want to say her five-year-old son with them. That little boy was so well-behaved. I was like, mm, my son. Well, at that time, I did not have a son. I just had two daughters. And Naila was like three and Yazzie was like one. And I, was, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Like, Aaliyah, I don't know if you want to take Laith. I don't know, sis. Like, um maybe no like maybe your older children like as long as they can I would say if they can sit through a long juma then maybe but if they still like mm, 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 I don't know alhamdulillah that was not my test so yeah I love the long juma as the litmus test <laughs> she said no life is a no <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Any other, were there, I, I'm not looking at the chat right now. Were there other questions, Haja, Saida? No, that was the only question. Okay. Any questions from everybody else from Girls Gone Haj? This is so cool. <laughs> well, what's about Lupita? That's another email. That's another email. You be like, is this real? I don't know if it's real, but we're going to respond just in case. So I'm the, like I said, Allah is truly kind. Uh, and he looks out for us because we get these random, like I do all the emails and I'm like, well, we're just going to go along with it until like Allah tells me it's not something that we're supposed to do. So I'm the, like her, um, I don't know, like manager or something like that sent an email and it was like, hey, and it was actually after we had sold out um like we had sold out for a period of time so it was after that so she actually reached out and was like by any chance do y'all have any I was like girl I will find some for the good sister Lupita like I will so um yeah so I'm the law like we sent them and she like she tells you she told us like there's no guarantee and I was like child please a box of bandages just all the maybe sure and so alhamdulillah, I want to say like, maybe I was looking back at the emails like a couple of weeks ago and it was like from the time that I sent them to the, to her manager to the time she posted, like it was less than a month. Like it took me completely by surprise. I was like, oh, alhamdulillah, I'm like, thank you. So, yeah. The great thing about her, that post with her, with that on her knee is like, it literally blends in. She yeah. totally proved the point. It is so beautiful. Yeah, alhamdulillah, yeah. I really did. So that was that was that was great. So we're gonna open it up for questions. Yeah, Any people questions? can come off their mic if they would like to. I think everybody's shy. Nobody wants to ask questions. I have one more question about when we went, it was what, which epidemic pandemic was it then? Swine flu? It was, 
swine bird flu. Bird flu. Bird flu. Bird flu. Bird flu. Mm -hmm. No, swine flu. Swine flu? Yeah. Did you have any viruses? Actually, no, and actually, like the year that we went, it was actually less people than normal. Yeah. Like we finished our farewell to WAFs fairly quickly. That's great. What time of year was that? So we went in November. So maybe September, you think? September, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, we went, uh, it, it was, I think there were record amounts of people the year we went. Do y'all remember really? that? It was because yeah. that was also the year that Obama's Obama. grandmother made Hodge as well. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because they mm -hmm. cleared the harem for her a little bit. Right. They cleared the harem. Oh, I'm going to grab my charger. Give me two seconds. I apologize. Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, I think that, like, that the prevalent theme here is like collaboration, you know. And get yourself on the Mount Arafat. Alhamdulillah, those duas are like, I can't even describe. Sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't want it to cut off in the middle of a socket, sorry. No, no, no. Um, well, we were just saying like the, um, the importance of getting your prayers um, on Mount Arafat, if you know someone who's going. Um, I know your sister in law is there now, right? Yes, I'm the, my sister Taco. She, my sister in law Taco, she is there, um, doing Umrah right now. Umrah, yes, yeah. So, anytime we find somebody that's going, we literally like flood them with our duas. Like, <laughs> look, it is nothing like it. I remember, um, one of the people who gave me like Hodge duas, it was it one was. of my friends. She she sent a dua and it was for her sister. Her sister had been married going on 10 years at that time. Um, so at this point, almost 20 years, I don't know, but she hadn't been able to conceive. And so like she had this long dua, like, and it was just like, oh, mashallah, like it was her sister making the dua for her. And alhamdulillah, um, I want to say like two years ago, two or three years ago, I don't know, COVID like messed up my past three years. I can't tell a year from year, but she had finally decided to adopt a son from Morocco, right? And they were going through the process because it's like a long drawn out process. And she got pregnant, like, while she was in the middle of the adoption process. And so Allah blessed her with not only her biological child, but her adopted son. Like, she couldn't even go to get him. Like, her husband had to go get him by herself because she was, like, really close to her due date. And then I, I just always reflect on the fact, like, I remember making that do out for her. And yeah, it took some years, but like that's that's like it's in a lost time, you know what I mean? Like it, but it happened for her. So I'm just like I can't I'm so happy for her, but also I like I can't help to be like even happier to be able to see like her sister's do out come into fruition for her. Like it's just like it's crazy when you think about it. Like it took a little time, but alhamdulillah, like it happened and it happened twofold for her on top of that. So yes, by any means necessary, get those duas in. <laughs> we love that story because we were just talking about, I think we did a live last week about, you know, you you say your prayer on Arafat and then sometimes you come back like, all right now. Right. Like Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and I was saying how I can check a box about certain things that have been you know revealed and other things that have not yet you know manifested in my sight however the power of the prayer is knowing that you know inshallah our hajjas are accepted Allah will grant those those to us and make those come to fruition so do not underestimate the power of 
prayer in general and prayers recited in the holy city of Mecca, specifically in the Haram or on Mount Arafat. So, wow. We just heard a story last night of almost an identical story to yours where the sister-in-law prayed for the sister to get pregnant. And by the time she came back from Hajj, she was pregnant. SubhanAllah, that's amazing. Yeah. She told, told us what a gift the child was. Mashallah. You know, there was just a specialness about this particular child that mm -hmm. she she really was able to like just hammer it home. So she, she was just saying, keep going, girls, going Hodge, because people need to know that, you know, this is what Hodge is. This is what Hodge yeah. does. So, SubhanAllah, we're so happy to hear that. Wow. Oh, any gems? Like, did you pack? Because we packed too much. We we literally, I mean, we just, we went to town. But did you, were you, you know, frugal in your packing or did you overdo it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a light packer, like just generally speaking. And plus I didn't really, I didn't know what to take, to be completely honest. I took like, um, I took like two directs, which I had never worn anything like that in my life. And then a sister that I, that attended our match did at the time, um, she let me borrow an outfit and I legit think that was all I took. Cause I would try my best to find clothes that was over there, but I'm not really a buyer type of girl. So I was just like, Oh, I'm just going to rock with these three outfits that I have and just wash them like over and over. And I'm delighted it worked. Like it really did. Um, I didn't bring no clothes back for myself. I think we brought clothes back for the kids and like my nephews and nieces, but yeah, I kept it light. I'm trying to think, did my husband buy a lot of stuff? I don't think he bought a lot of stuff either. You know what I did splurge on? Scarves. That's what I bought a lot of. That's what I bought a lot of while I was there. It was like, especially like we was in Medina. I'm going to say like when we were in Medina, like after my grip or something, like they would just like put out a sheet and like dump out all these scars. And you were like, oh yeah, I'll take that one, that one, that one, that one. That's what I do remember. Like I brought a lot of scars, but I did give some away. So. And we but and the other thing that we really liked buying was prayer rugs. Man, we still got all these prayer rugs to this day. And I just feel like, oh, we bought those when we were in Hodge. Yeah. Oh, we, we can we have that same. Home. We have that same. We came out of a store one time and there was this like the hijab fairy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I there were like that. Legit, like two dollars hour right like, exactly whatever. so like almost every day i would buy some because it was just like why not where else am i gonna find beautiful scars for two dollars right exactly and didn't somebody, um, didn't somebody need an extra suitcase to pack all those scars we did we literally had to get an extra all suitcase, suitcase all the hijabs hey, and hey. um we you know somebody we get asked a lot, like, what, what do we, what do, should we, you know, bring back people? And I'm like, bring back, make a do one for them. <laughs> right. Like, obviously, you know, you want to, but like the best thing you could do is make a do in, on Arafat or in uh, Master Master Harem. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. So your aunt, your aunt Andrea has a, a, a comment or question. Um, so um, some people have stated that they have to make Hodge twice. Do you plan on making Hodge again? Me? Um, ultimately, I would love to. But I think with this new like lottery system, I don't know the likelihood of me able to be in the, being able to go again. Um, I definitely want to make Umrah. I want to take my children. Um, actually my 10 year old, um, before she turned 10, like she was like, I want to make Umrah while I'm 10. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure she said Hodge because she was like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But she was like, I'm gonna go every 10 years. I was like, oh, okay, sweetie, you got every 10 years money. Like, how are we doing this? But so that, that really is a goal of mine to take 
her. Like I really wanted to take her sometime this year while she was 10, a lot of island that hasn't worked out yet, but I really would like to take her um all of them but like she's the one that planted the seeds so I, I would love to take them how did it lie so i did drop something i want to know for those in our audience who have gone to hodge just drop the year that you've gone on it and if it was multiple years drop the years that you you've gone so we just want to take a poll to see what our community looks like i know because i'm looking at people on here definitely have gone isn't that so beautiful we come from a community where people have gone more than one time it's unbelievable yeah I'm there. you know and it's, it's interesting to note like in our community specifically the african-american muslim community you know we get dms a lot from from immigrant muslims from um, the middle east and they say you know like this this you guys, this is not like a thing, like, yeah. for us. like it. So, you know, growing up, that's all we saw. I see Sister Sophia on here. Like, she tells these stories about Hodge in the 80s and like how hot it was. And like, these are the stories that are like we grew up with. Um, It was, it was huge in our community in Jersey, huge. So, you know, I think that we have to just keep pushing that forward. And, you know, like your daughter was like, I'm going every 10 years. Like, what a bold statement. And I love it. And think of her children, I mean, her, her peer group, you know, if yeah. that catches fire, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Like, to go when, like, so I went in 2013. So, like, I was about 30. And alhamdulillah, it wasn't a hardship for me. So like, I can only hope and pray that people, sisters, um, namely like go as young as they can, like before all those responsibilities set in, like go ahead and get your hodge in, sis. Like, yeah. You know what's interesting? Oh, I see um, Aaliyah has a question. Oh, you could so I'm driving, so don't uh, excuse the background noise. Kids are in the car, too. But I did have a question. So I missed the year that you all said that you went. Um, Girls Gone Hodge, which year did you guys go? 2009. 2009. So I'm just curious of, like, how, um, like, updated it is compared to now. Do you know, like, uh, I know just based off the different stories, it's, I know it's been updated, but like from now, it seems like every year they're getting more, they doing more updates and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of like, I want to go before it, like before they just make stuff super easy. You were just rolling around, I, you know, before they get, you know, too much. I feel like I really want to go before it gets like too, you know, too much. Luxury. Yeah, luxury. <laughs> they was definitely like when we went to Arafat, we was like, it was, it was not roughing it at all. Like the, the North American like section was like palm trees and like tents. Oh, and wow. was like, we did, we were like, no, nah, we're going to stay out here on these rocks. And people kept coming to us like, why are you guys <laughs> out here? We was like, we gotta, like, we gotta feel this. Like we're not trying to be in right. air conditioned tents and all this other stuff. Like it was, it was just like, oh, this they really catering to like the American likeness in us because it was a whole, they really had palm trees. I was like, oh, wow. y'all planted <laughs> palm trees for us? Okay. <laughs> we did not have palm trees. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Me, Rashid, and Mahasa were like, we're just going to sit out here on the like rocks for a little bit just so we can, you know, get in the whole spirit of things because y'all in an air conditioned tent right now. Oh, yeah. But the drama rocks have changed like drastically. Really? Even from when we went, um, from when the year we went, I remember um our Haji Kalogani who we went with, he's like, this is a you know, I have like a vision of, of it and it was nothing like that. It was a lot yeah. made it so easy for us. So and there's yeah. I, I think there's a is there a tra train train? Yeah, there's it's a, a train, train that'll take there you is. to Medina now. 
Yeah. So that's that's new. Yeah. <laughs> they they were building that and 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 when 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 we went in twenty in two thousand and nine, the jump the new John Morant had just opened. Um, and then um, what else? The clock wasn't up yet. Oh yeah, the clock tower was up when we went in 2013. Yeah, we were just like, and I was telling my kids about that, and like you know, like that being one of the signs. My kids was like, well, why they do it? I was like, girl, I don't know why they did it. Like I don't mm-hmm. know. Like she was like, if they knew, like this was something. I was like, it's the decree of a lie. It's like they can't even help themselves. Like you know what I mean? So. Shukran for your question, Sister Aaliyah. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And I would say, don't worry about, you know, <laughs> take advantage of the luxury. Your, yeah, your, yeah. Your Hodge, it will be a spiritual experience based on your engagement with making your prayers and all that. Right. Don't, don't, don't be a hero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good. That's the good. Except the good, subhanAllah. It's, 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 I was going to say, it's funny because Taqwa, she was sending, my sister, she was sending uh, some videos as her over there. And she, she was like, oh, we are at, um, this is Safa and Marwa. And I'm like, where are y'all headed there? Because I didn't know the whole time. I'm thinking it's like outside, like they're walking. like. And she's like, no, it's inside. I'm like, oh, wow. It's so much I, you know, just yeah. assumed or, ex- you know, expect. But it's, you know, totally different. So I'm shy, I'll be alive. Um, allow me to go over there um, soon, inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, well, it looks like we're at time. If anybody else had any other quick questions, we could get those answered, but then we want to respect your time. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming on. We really appreciate it. I think I was like, how come I didn't put it together that you had gone to hide? So I appreciate, you know, you're accepting the invitation to come on. If you all would just stay engaged with the Girls Gone Hodge movement, inshallah, you know, being engaged with our pages and, you know, checking the emails we send. If you are, have not made Hodge, inshallah, I'll put you one step closer to making Hodge, inshallah. inshallah. Um, do we want to close out with Asr, inshallah, customarily? Yes. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal Asr. Inna insani la fi kus. Illa ladina amani wa amanu salihati wa tuwa sabahak wa tuwa sabah sabra. Ameen. Thank you, ladies. Shukran, Haja. Shukran, Haja. Shukran, Haja. Shukran, Haja. Okay. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum everyone. Wa alaikum assalam.